recently you, you recently published a paper, the restoration of energy homeostasis by Sir Six right. extends healthy lifespan, and I mean you did another paper as well back in two thousand and twelve, but this one was published recently. Could you briefly talk about what was the outcome in terms of the lifespan and health span? Oh sure, but I can say can I say one sentence before? Yeah, it? please. So yes. So before two thousand and twelve. We did some very interesting experiment. We took mice and we created mice that overexpress certain things. The same level that you have increased under color restriction. Now we have mice that we manipulate the genome that have higher level of certain things, exactly like under color restriction. Okay, so we don't need to do color restriction, but we still have higher level of certain things. Mm -hmm. And we call this mice Moses because it's a shortcut for mice overexpressing exogenous certain things. That's the short the, the, the name for this called Moses. And the first experiment that we did with these mice was we, we took these mice and fed them for half a year high fat diet. This means in human terms that let's say for a quarter of your life, you eat in, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, every of you, each of your meal, you're going to, I hope nobody's going to sue me, you're going to McDonald's and you eat in McDonald's. That's the meaning of 60% of your calorie coming from fat. And now the mice become extremely fat and they develop all the pathologies which are related to, to obesity, meaning that they develop type 2 diabetes, they have higher level of triglyceride, they have higher level of cholesterol, they have inflammation, everything that you imagine that come with obesity, this mice have. But if you overexpress 36, none of this appears. So they don't have develop, they don't have higher level of triglyceride, they have lower level of cholesterol, they do not accumulate a fat, abdominal fat, they have, they do not develop type two diabetes. They don't have increase in inflammation. And for us, it was very exciting. Why it was very exciting? Because each of these phenomena that you see with obesity, if you think about it, also happen in old individuals. We develop higher level of triglycerides. We develop high level of cholesterol. We develop type two diabetes. We definitely have aging. We have inflammation as we age at the age of 40 to 50, 60 in the modern, let's say in the Western world, we start to be more obese, then we lose it. But all these processes we see in aging, that would be, so because of that, it encourage us to do the ultimate experiment. Meaning that let's take this mice without color restriction, normal diet, and see what's happened to the lifespan. Mm -hmm. With these mice, we live longer. And what we found out, that was the last paper, we published it previously, now in the last paper it was, that may live almost 30% longer, it was actually it was 27 point something. In female, it was 15% longer. In, in, this is the average. There are some mice that live 50% longer in the group. This means, in, like in human terms, that if I expect to live up to 90, hopefully, I don't know, but let's say I expect to live up to 90, now I'm going to live up to 120. This is a huge change. In lifespan, it's also very important to society. We can speak about the influence about, of it on society. But the main thing that we were concerned about was whether or not we change what we call the health span of this mice. Because one thing is to, to make you live long. Second, at least important as well, is to improve your health, not only to, to change the number of years that you live. Because if I take a human being and I will extend in lifespan and he will be sick for the next 30 years, I'm not sure that everybody will like this uh, suggestion, right? So what, what we found was what's happened to the health span. And then we found many observations, positive effects. First, we found that these mice maintain normal glucose hormone studies, so they do not develop type 2 diabetes. Also, this is another paper before, it. we found out that these mice have a normal uh, blood uh, biochemistry. For example, with age, you have reduced in albumin. You don't see it in 36 mice. This is one thing. We follow cancer, and we, we found out there is a delay in the appearance of cancer in these mice, which is extremely important. And very importantly, we also found that these mice do not develop what's called frailty syndrome. So what is frailty syndrome? Right? I'm not sure that you heard about frailty syndrome. Frailty syndrome, it, it's something that if you will think, how do you imagine and all the individuals, you would say, he's exhausted, he's barely moved, he doesn't have power in, in his muscle, right? He cannot run, and so on, and so on. And then also he's losing his weight. 
suddenly without even doing diet. That's how you imagine all the individuals. All this phenotype together called the frailty syndrome. And the NIA, which is the National Institute of Aging, part of the, the NIH, consider it as one of the main challenges of the 21st century because out of, that's it, age 65, depend which part of the world, five to 10% of the individuals develop frailty syndrome. You don't need to develop the full range of frailty syndrome. It's enough that you have two of these, you will consider as pre frail If you have three, you consider to have frailty syndrome. If you age 80, 30% of all the individuals age 80 have frailty syndrome. So it's a very important, it's very, it has a great impact on the society because if we will be able to improve this one, we can make many people less active to be much more active. It's affect every angle of the challenge that we have with age. So then one of the, why, why I'm mentioning frailty syndrome, because when we follow the 36 mice, it over, the mice that overexpress in 36, and we follow their activity, and we did two types of activities. One which we call voluntary activity. So we give them a wheel, and we follow them for a week and see how long they run on the wheel. If they want, they can go to run. If they don't, they sit aside, they don't do anything. The other thing which is force activity. Force activity, you put them on a treadmill, and then they start to run on a treadmill. So you force them to run on the treadmill. In both cases, 36 overexpression mice run exactly the older mice like young, like young mice. So they, so they have, they maintain the muscle strength, they have the same activity, they, they, they didn't lose weight spontaneously. So they were protected against frailty syndrome. So this, this is a great finding, but as a scientist, the, the next question, the question that we ask ourselves, okay, how are they doing it? You know, so we raise third six, what is the mechanism? How do we find the mechanism that third six increase, or let's say blocks the development of a frailty syndrome? I can send you a movie that's showing four mice, two of them are normal mice, very old mice, two of them are very old mice, which are 36 overexpression mice, and the two which are 36 overexpression run like young, and the other two don't move, they cannot run anymore. The, so the bottom line was, I can rephrase the question, okay? You, you remember I started saying that when we all, we don't have energy, when we run, we need to find, when we run for a long time, we need to find sources for energy because we finish our sugar, the glucose, if you fast, for example, if you start the fasting uh, during the day, you need to find a source of energy. So the question we rephrase it, how third six find the sources of energy when you don't have sources of energy? Because we ask, okay, what's happened to old mice? And we try to fast them for let's say 24 hours. If you take normal mice, young mice, and you give them, and they're doing fasting for 24 hours, in the beginning, there is a drop in the glucose. It's happened also for you and me, so every mice, for every animal, there is a decrease in glucose. Then our body is able to create glucose from other sources. It's called gluconeogenesis. Then after a few hours, if we don't have enough uh, a precursor for this, and it's drop again to very low levels of glucose, of sugar in your blood. That's happened in, any, in, in every animal that's fasting. If you are an uh, old individual, you fail to do this post, the, the, the glucose level is going down, then it starts to increase, but not to the same level as in young animals. Because you don't, you, the mechanism that uh, allow you to produce glucose under starvation, it's, it's blocked when you're old, it's, very, it's reduced. Let's, it's not blocked, it's reduced. When we did it in 36 overexpressed mice, we found out that this mice now maintain glucose level or can have gluconeogenesis exactly like young mice. And, the, and so then we did a very sophisticated experiment. We took the, the, the precursor that the body is creating this glucose and we labeled them with, with some uh, specific ion and we inject them into the body. And now we can follow what's happened to this. And we'll be able to show that the body, when you overexpress the cystic, is now using what's called lactate that's coming from the muscle and is using a, a triglyceride, no, not triglyceride, fatty acid that's coming from the, from the fat in order to produce a glucose. And that's the mechanism how 36 is doing it. Now, this, it's more complicated than this, like it's always. 
Mm. But then we did something even more complicated. We took, we, we did something that's called metabolomics. What is metabolomics? It's a very long word, but we need to, to, to find what is metabolomics. So metabolomics basically means that you follow each metabolite in your body and you can measure it. We use a, a machine that's called mass spectrometry and we can measure the level of each metabolite in your body. It can be the level of glucose, the level of specific uh, fat, the level of amino acid, everything I can measure in, t in each tissue that I'm doing. And then we found out that if you look on the metabolic change during aging, cell 6 actually reversed each of this change in the liver. So now, for example, you have reduction in beta oxidation, cell 6 take it back to the normal level. So it's rewiring or what we call maintaining the energy homeostasis at all age when you overexpress cell 6 so it's find the way to, to provide you energy at times that you don't have energy. This could be when you're old, when you're fast, when you're doing a exercise for a very long time, and so on. So this is how cell is doing it. Now, I know that you want to ask me about NAD because the question is, if there is anything else in it, right? Okay, so one of the things that we follow was we knew so that to do this process, that uh, take this precursor, we call anonym, and convert it to pyruvat, and, all, and also to use it in other steps in this, uh, in this pathway, you need NAD. So we measured the level of NAD. And we, and we found out the third six, it, when you overexpress it, you have higher level of NAD. This is extremely important. Why it's extremely important? Because as we age, the lev this level of NAD is reduced. And you need NAD in order to maintain your, your energy or metabolic uh, homeostasis. So one of the ways that Celtic is doing it, it's increasing the level of NAD. And we know the mechanism how it's doing it, but I'm not going to go into detail. And by this, it supports first this metabolic shift that I spoke about two minutes ago. And also it can support DNA repair protein, which are very important because now you are not accumulating DNA damage. And this was a very long experiment or description of what we did. 